Well, there's a lot of different variety in exactly what dance can be, which I think is evident in this program, uh, which doesn't even begin to explore the range of what dance can be. The piece I am creating is called Concertino. The title is The Heart Thieves. The story is based on uh, the ghost light, which lives in the theater. New Dance Partners was, I guess, kind of a borrowed concept from Dance St. Louis. Um, they have a program called New Dance Horizons. So we were talking with them about some sort of partnership and I liked what they had done with New Dance Horizons, which was to hire choreographers to come to their community and create new work for local dance companies. It is really just an expression of the music and the dancers and their personalities. I didn't know them before I started with them seven days ago, so it's all been kind of like speed dating. I've been influenced by a lot of different styles, I think, and it's been a great group. I helped you know, pick the dancers, and, and only four dancers, it makes it a lot easier to sort of control the room, and, and they've been giving me a lot of great information, and so it's been a wonderful process, actually. The choreographers we selected this year came from several different cities. Penny Saunders came in to work with Owen Cox Dance Group. She's from, um, actually she lives in Seattle now, but she has a history with Hubbard Street Dance Chicago and Modern Dance. Amy Seiward is here from San Francisco. She has her own dance company, Amy Seiward Imagery. Uh, she's been a dancer and choreographer for over 20 years and she's working with the Kansas City Ballet. Robert Moses is here. Um, Robert is also from San Francisco. He has his own company, Robert Moses Kin. Uh, again, a great modern dancer, has been a choreographer primarily for the past 10 to 15 years. And so he's working with Williams Henry uh, Contemporary Dance Company. It's a lot more about revealing the body, revealing the space, uh, than about facial expressions, clarity of text or song that you might find in other art forms. In Kansas City, um, these are the three major professional dance companies that represent our city and the dance community. And as far as I know, the three of them don't come together to perform on the same program at any other time in any other location. So that's really the biggest unique part for me as a presenter to be able to present each of our professional dance companies from the city on our stage in one evening. Um, that's not something that you see most places. Dance is the heart. Everybody has a heartbeat. That's a movement. Everybody walks. So it's, it's something that's inherent in every per person, whether they think of it or not. Movement is inherent in just being a human being. Dance has always been important, and if I get philosophical, in early societies, dance was the way of communication before there was language. Dance is, has a connection to an audience. Um, if you're doing it well, the, the, you're drawn to the dancer that's on stage, and often you can tell a great deal about the emotion or if there is a story or just connect to somebody. I think a dancer without any artistry isn't a real dancer. Um, that being said, we are an athlete to the extent of the word. I mean, every muscle is finely tuned. Um, but you can't just jump like an athlete would and show the grit on your face. You have to convey an emotion that is generally not struggle. 
Um, so you have to have the athleticism in your body, but at the same time, you have to be an artist and tell a story and get somebody to feel something out there in the audience. They're strong like an athlete, but just to be an athlete and have, you know, big jumps and turns and legs going high doesn't make you a dancer because you would be boring because you would just be this little mechanical thing that could do everything. So the art is the most important. The heart of the dancer is what's most important. Dancers are athletes because they train often more than a lot of other athletes train. So it is, it is art, but you have to be conditioned like you were um, a world-class athlete to be able to do it. And if you don't do that, there's always a dancer next to you that is doing that kind of training in addition to the art of it. Penny and I uh, designed the ghost light itself together um, based on some research that we both did. Together created the uh, hanging bulb pattern along with another collaborator she has back at home. The ghost needs some light to perform to so that they don't sabotage the show um, when other people are around during the audience. So I thought that was a fascinating story to tell. With my own company, I've known those dancers a long time. We've done many, many collaborations together, and um, sometimes they can finish my sentence artistically, uh, which is both a blessing and a curse. When I come here, I can have the same artistic intention, but these dancers, because I don't know them, will interpret what I'm saying differently, and that can lead me to a whole new place. Well, I <laughs> She has lots of little phrases that she uses, little games that she plays to get you to do a certain movement the way she envisions it. She talks about bubbles and circles and bats and there's all kind of visuals that she uses to, it lightens the mood as well as gets us to move the way she's wanting us to. So really letting go and just playing the game, like taking it a little lighter is something that I've learned from her. Playing with something, seeing what happens this way. You have to be a thinking dancer, not only a great dancer, but a thinking dancer to work with Robert Moses. So the dancers are really very much in the creative process with him. Um, he's not sequential. It's not one thing and then you build it on. He develops all sorts of material and then he actually will ask dancers to improvise his material or to choose a phrase and bring it to him. It can be very hard on a dancer because there's so much material that they have to know and manipulate or flip around. So they have to work very, very closely with his choreography and remember a great deal. So it's easier often if you're used to doing sequential one piece and add on to it, but he doesn't. He's always mixing up the choreography and stirring it and saying, okay, I like it this direction. Well, how about if you did it the other way? And what if we remember what we did two days ago and put that in here? I think the process of working uh, with one group and then working with another are always different uh, because you're working with different folks. And so unless you go in and you want to be a dictator, then your process will shift. There are two different kinds of ballets, one that has been created prior and it's just being retaught to you. So you're basically just recreating the movement that somebody else was originally the first um, person to create it. It's always interesting when it's new because normally if you, if you set a work, you're just setting what has already been done. But if you're creating a new work, the dancers that you're working with are actual paramount to the creation of the work. With Amy's piece, we are the, the instruments that she is using in real time. She's taking our bodies and making something happen with them right there. We're not just doing something that she had thought, you know, thought about a couple of years ago. It's, right, it's happening right there. Because of the way they move, the choreographer also changes or alters or enhances choreography. So I think in a new thing, you're actually part of the creative process. You're not just a dancer. And you are giving feedback to a choreographer as he shapes his works. You really feel like you're more part of creating art as opposed to recreating something. Your, your, your person is more invested in, in that 
piece because of that. Getting dance companies or any arts organizations to work together um, can be logistically a little challenging. Um, it can be politically a little challenging. But I think in this case, we all had a common goal, and that was to create this work and to put it out there for people and get people interested in dance in Kansas City. Uh, let's see if I get some light. Yeah. So everybody, careful, we're going to go dark shortly. Can we lose the work light and the house light? It's also so important just to have the commissioning aspect of this. Uh, dance is an art form that you can't practice unless you have dancers in a studio making the art with you. As a choreographer, I need this so I can grow as an artist. It's a lot less stressful to be able to just be an observer and um, assistant and not have to worry about learning my <laughs> own steps and performing them. So it's, it's been enjoyable. Um, it was enjoyable to get to perform the work of a, a choreographer coming in and it's also been enjoyable getting to watch a choreographer work on the dancers. There's no other place to practice making ballets than actually having dancers and making ballets. I Hope New Dance Partners inspires people by showing how um, artists can work together to create something entirely new. I also hope it inspires people by showing them how, as an arts community, we collaborate and we work together, and that's probably one of the most exciting things that we can accomplish in the arts community is to come together to create a project like this. So I'll still part of the same community and really when we're all successful it, it helps build the audience for everybody and that's really kind of the best outcome of this project that I can see is it helps strengthen dance in Kansas City, it helps strengthen the dance audience in Kansas City and helps make um, Kansas City more of a destination for dance. My favorite part of this project is at the end of the night when we get to see all the dance companies lined up together taking one bow together. I just think it's really important for everyone to get together and talk about something other than what's going on in the world and violence and all the bad things that are happening. It's nice to come together and talk about beauty and art and if I can put beauty into the world just a little bit then I've done my job. The project as a whole um, was just awesome. The, just all these companies coming together, just everyone dancing and using their art. I think it, I think it's really great for the Kansas City dance community. Um, we all get to work together. We get to see each, each other's pieces. We get to take class together. Especially in dance, I think it's it's important to get new ideas going, and I think it's a really it's a great thing to have 
different companies in the community that maybe don't work together come together. We don't really get to do that in Kansas City very often. Um, we all see each other perform like different at uh, different venues and stuff, but just coming together and kind of bonding and growing. And, and, and we support each other and we have a lot of fun. Um, you know, we're, we share all a big dressing room and so like, you know, we like get to know each other and just joke around and, and um, you know, we're all backstage like rooting for each other. And It was really like a heartfelt experience being with so many amazing, inspiring professional dancers. From a dancer's perspective, you get to bring out different aspects of yourself that maybe you didn't know were there. And then also from uh, like an audience perspective, it allows them to see see works that they haven't seen before. And so all in all, I think it's really, it's an important sort of um, breeding ground for creativity. Just the overall experience just made me really realize why I just love dancing. Just the process of like growing and um, just really using um, all my skills in like a completely different way. The dance is about community, it shouldn't be like, and that's kind of what New Dance Partners promotes. There's a lot going on in the city and it's cool that that we can all do it together.